Hey guys, Ron here, and there's something about normal types that seems a bit special to me. When you fall in love with a normal type, the bond is a bit stronger. You may love a fire or ice type because it's so hot or cool, or maybe your favorite ghost or dragon type is incredibly spooky or intimidating, and that excites you. But with normal types, they usually don't have a sick element that they harness, and when they do, it's usually not a huge part of their lore. They are normal for a reason, because they aren't too extraordinary, and to love them despite that is pretty heartwarming. Even I barely create normal types, so what if I took a bunch of famous non-normal types and took away everything that makes them extremely fantastical? It's actually way harder than you think, because I still want to make them interesting. I don't want to just take a Trico and make him a boring gecko, or remove Lycanroc's rocks and call it a day. I want my new concepts to have interesting lore, as if they were always normal type and not just boring versions of their original counterpart. And believe me, most Pokemon can't be turned into normal types. Skullvillain as a normal type would not be a pepper anymore. Venomoth wouldn't even be a moth. Pelipper would literally be nothing. <laughs> I don't want to strip the Pokemon of their entire existence, so only a few Pokemon were candidates. You'll see. They'll span from regional variants and forms to similar Pokemon with different names. If you want to see a part 2, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to let me know. And make sure to check out all my other Fakemon challenges too. But before I move on, I do want to normalize the most important thing of all taking care of your mental health. That's why today our lovely sponsor is BetterHelp. Instead of using an animated mascot, I thought it would be more important to speak to you face to face about my own mental health journey. A few years ago, I began to go to therapy for my own social anxiety disorder. I was always relatively introverted, but after pretty much all of my friends moved out of town and I took on a career where I pretty much just work alone in my room and, you know, every day hear hundreds of people's opinions of me, I developed an anxiety disorder, further isolating myself. But just the act of talking to my therapist was a huge part of getting my life back on track. Ever since, I've been a big advocate of therapy. Therapy. But I eventually became aware of the fact that many of you guys who want to seek help don't have the physical or monetary ability to go to therapy. Maybe the right therapist isn't in your area, you don't have insurance, or you don't feel comfortable with in-person therapy. That's why BetterHelp is a great solution. If you just click the link in the description or visit BetterHelp slash TrueGreen7, they'll connect you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you advice through phone calls, video chats, or messages at whatever time that's convenient to you. After filling out a questionnaire to better assess your specific needs, in most cases, you'll get matched with your therapist within 48 hours, and if it's not the right match, which is common when first starting therapy, you can easily switch therapists at no cost, which believe me is super tough to do with more traditional forms of therapy. So if you want to see if it helps you while also supporting my channel, please go to the description and visit betterhelp.com slash truegreen7 to get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. I cannot recommend it enough. Let's start easy. Turning a ghost into something normal ain't too hard since the concept of a ghost already implies the existence of a pre-ghost creature. Now it's a popular theory that Gengar is the doppelganger of a Clefairy. Now I already kind of made a fairy type Gengar a few years ago. Uh, I mean, it's not perfect. It's not, <laughs> not my best work, but I don't want to, you know, retread similar territory. Plus we're looking for a pure normal type here. So considering Gengar has a bit of Cheshire Cat in him, what if we literally turned him into a cat? He'll still have Gengar's signature grin, but he won't necessarily be malicious or have the ability to disappear. Just the essence of a cat, but one that ends up doing the right thing in the end. Almost like the protagonist of a silent film. I'm not gonna take a bit of visual inspiration for- Okay, why was that Italian for a second? I'm gonna take a bit of inspiration from Totoro, from My Neighbor Totoro, and perhaps a bit of Striped Tabby Cat. So first, I'm gonna draw Gengar. I thought getting the proportions perfect would be half the battle, because this Pokemon is so iconic that fans will recognize it if its proportions are a bit off. I added a cute nose, and Gengar is already spiky, but I added spikes in places Gengar does not usually have spikes. Brilliant, if I do say so myself. The point is, it's, it's more cat-like. Even the pupils are more feline. I thought whiskers pulled it all together, and the tail added more flair. The colors will be where most of the difference is at, though. It already looks fantastical, so the color scheme will help ground it. I forgot to say that that's why it's standing on the ground, because it no longer floats. I knew I wanted stripes, but originally I wanted it to look more like ribbons and segments alluding to a Cheshire cat, but then I realized how obviously better these more natural stripes were. Along with the green eyes, it successfully looks like a cat Gengar instead of a Gengar that is a different color. Here is Gengar, the corporeal Pokemon. This form has been discovered to be the original species of Gengar. They contain an above average amount of gas stored within them. The gas that builds up within its body allows Gengar to bounce around. This is why Gengar perpetually grins, but rarely opens its mouth. While its face looks sinister, it is actually very friendly and compliant. It allows kids to pet its fluffy fur and bounce on its belly. It can inflate slightly in order to repel attacks. In battle, Gengar will claw at its opponents with its sharp claws. The micro holes on its claws release trace amounts of its internal gas, allowing its swipes to reach further and hurt 
hurt even ghost Pokemon. When this Pokemon passes away, its soul mingles with the internal gas inside of its body and continues to roam the earth in the form of a ghost poison type. It has the abilities Scrappy, Unnerve, and the hidden ability Normalize. Its shiny is a bit obvious, yet colorful. Honestly, this is exactly what I wanted to see. Can't complain at all. It looks like something that could have been eventually created if Gengar never existed. Next one is the most unusual Pokemon in existence, Claydol. How do you make a literal clay doll into something normal? Well, you just create the original animal that the doll is trying to depict. You see, clay doll and its line is based on Dogu, small humanoid figures that depict some kind of hominid and could have been used as effigies representing people and could, for example, uh, be used to transfer illnesses and misfortune from a person into these dolls. Or they could be depicting a curvy goddess. I don't know. The point is, they were made for good. So what if the clay dolls that ancient Hoenians made were meant to depict this cute ancient Pokemon that hung around and just helped out? Something that wasn't mystical at all and was just a little normal type guy that ancient people loved and wanted to make figures of. So I'm gonna make it look like a mini clay doll. A lot of its attributes and proportions will be a mix of Baltoy and clay doll so that the entire line could stem from this thing. It has one beak inspired by the many beaks clay doll has and this unibrow inspired by the one that the original family has. At this point, I wanted to make it look more like a bird by giving it feathers as if the spikes clay doll has were an interpretation of this guy's protruding feathers, but then it looked too much like a basic bird. I wanted it to look like an enig enigmatic? enigmatic Pokemon that only existed in the past, some kind of vague creature instead of a straight up bird, so I gave him puffy arms and little fingers. Once I gave it a little crown like ornament on the head, I realized I've always associated pomegranates with ancient civilizations, so making it look like one ain't half bad of an idea. Like the fruit, it's very beneficial and healthy to be around. The legs are literally clay dolls, but the pattern on the belly is not only inspired by clay doll and bow toys, but also makes it look like a Pokeball. Perhaps this Pokemon was emulated so much in figurines and inventions that its pattern was adopted on a Pokeball. Since this little guy was the ultimate helper, it was used like a friendly tool that captured the hearts of ancient Hoenians. Makes sense for a tool that captures to inspire the Pokeball. Just finishing it off before giving it the color originally closer to clay dolls, but then realizing that I don't want the eye to get lost in the black body and that it was a precious Pokemon, so a more shiny silver body is appropriate. The bluish tint not only complements the yellow, but also looks like something that would be designed in Gens 3 and 4. Say hi to Palm Pal, the companion Pokemon from Pomegranate and Pal, but also the fact that it fits in the palm of your hand. Palm Pal were loyal Pokemon that were once abundant in ancient Hoenn. They would be at the side of every Hoennian working and playing every day. They captured the hearts of all who encountered them. They would mediate between enemies and take care of children. They were not particularly powerful in battle, but would help spar with other Pokemon in order to train them. Ancient texts reveal that the entire species of Pompal went extinct after they collectively combined their strength to shield Hoenn from a calamity. To honor Pompal's sacrifice, primitive Hoennians etched Pompal's likeness into mud figurines and toys. These figures came to life after being exposed to mysterious rays of light. Thus, Claydol and Baltoy were born. They have the abilities Q-Charm, Magic Guard, and Huge Power. Their shiny is a precious gold. I honestly fell in love with this fake mon while writing his dex entry. So please, type rest in peace, Pompal, in the comments to honor this friend. Darmanitan is next. You may be thinking, don't we already have a non-fire type Darmanitan? Well, yeah, and it makes it a lot harder since Galarian Darmanitan is white and that's kind of the normal color to me. But we can complete the Darmanitan saga by making it a trio. The real ones already represent uh, heat or cold, while ours will be temperate. A Darmanitan that isn't cold or hot, it's just a normal Darmanitan. It'll represent Darmanitan including its zen mode, but it'll be a, it'll be a Darmanitan that's already kind of zen, but still active sitting, but awake and, and alert. Darmanitan is based on Daruma dolls, which are modeled after the founder of Zen Buddhism, the Bodhidharma. So our Darmanitan will be a monk, but before he becomes enlightened. We'll take inspiration from actual orangutans and their behavior. To me, they always seemed like the chillest kinds of apes, and we'll try to give it, uh, you know, orangutan energy. I wouldn't have minded if it was a normal psychic type, but we already have a normal psychic type orangutan. Imagine a less aggressive Darmanitan that sits. It's obviously inspired by Zen mode, but is uh, very much active, like an orangutan that is chillin' but still grabbing everything that catches its attention. A very patient yet curious Pokemon. I want to make sure that some elements like its mouth, patterns, and eyebrows are a mixture of all three Darmanitan designs that already exist. Okay, now I gave zero representation to the Galarian Zen mode, which is like the fourth form technically. Some detailed grabbers, and only one pupil, since the Ruma figures are bot having blank eyes, then the owner 
corner selects a goal or wish and paints it on the left eye of the figure using ink, and then once the goal is achieved, the, the right eye is uh, filled in. This implies that this Pokemon is right in the middle between all Darmanitans. Since you know Vindarmanitan has spiky fur and the Galarian form has fluffy fur, I mean, not really, it's really ice actually, I'd give this one shaggy hair more akin to real orangutans. Also fits on a sedentary Pokemon. I gave it a mixture of the colors of both forms, again just making it look more like a normal orangutan to match this normal type. The gold accents I ended up with complete the package. Check out Darmanitan, the Zen Pokemon. This form of Darmanitan is rarely angry or energetic. It is incredibly patient and simply awaits for others to attack before retaliating. It sits for most of its life. It grabs onto vines in order to travel and find food, all while resting its legs. It is believed to be the earliest incarnation of Darmanitan, with a primitive version of the flame sack Unovan Darmanitan possesses. This allows itself to warm its body as it sits during the cold nights, but it cannot produce fire on its own. It is intelligent enough, however, to use tools in order to create fire. It'll often create a campfire for forest Pokemon and sit with them all through the night. It has a new ability called Grappler. When hit with a move that makes contact, it grabs onto its opponent, powering up its following move by 50%. It's almost like Guerrilla Tactics, but it can only be activated when hit. Doesn't have a move limit and applies to like all damaging moves, but hopefully the fact that it's a slow Pokemon helps control this potentially OP ability. Not gonna lie though, I think I may prefer the shiny for some reason. The old look gives it slightly more personality. I'm glad I was able to find a new gimmick with this Pokemon with grappling, instead of simply making a sitting Darmanitan. Now what if we made a normal type Halucha? I know the whole point of Halucha is the fact that it's a dual type that fully utilizes the fact that it has two types. I believe it was the first Pokemon to receive a dual typed uh, move, but I'm not gonna fact check that because this isn't a fact video and I am lazy. So would stripping this Luchador Hawk of its types make it still interesting? Oddly enough, this is the one that's gonna change the least in this video. I'm gonna make a retired unmasked wrestler who now trains and coaches other Pokemon. It's gonna take inspiration from luchadors when they're not fighting, but I also simply wanna see a Halucha without patterns that allude to its mask. Unfortunately, that means removing the sweet, sweet green, but hey, sometimes you gotta do things you don't wanna do for the entertainment of others. Now, I take no creative credit for this one. It's literally just Halucha standing, now that it doesn't fly or fight. Its arms are even behind its back to show how it restraints its power. It's looking down on its protege, and the feathers behind its neck Im imitate the look of a cowl that has been taken off. It has no patterns on the face now that it's uh, maskless, but the patterns on its chest now mimic a suit and tie. It doesn't have the feathers on its groin anymore, no superfluous features, just Halucha colors without any green on the mask. I added more triangles to the cheek to look like some facial hair that was under the mask, but along with the triangles that look like eyelashes, it's got a Mexican aesthetic going on. Behold, Halucha, retired. The training Pokemon. This form of Halucha has renounced fighting and trains other Pokemon in martial arts. This form of Halucha is brought upon when a newly hatched fighting type in its party plays with Halucha in the next generation's version of Pokemon Picnic. Halucha is inspired by its protege's determination and vows to train it. Halucha bobs and weaves as its student spars with it. It's a brutal master, but will show unexpected emotion and pride when its students succeed in battle. It has a new ability called Coach. In a double battle, any stat boosting move will apply to its ally instead of itself. Does no Pokemon have a similar ability? If not, is this ability OP or actually quite useful and balanced? Let me know. It's definitely an uncanny design seeing Halucha with a blank face, but I do love the concept. And finally, once again, I'm gonna attempt to make Calyrex relevant and popular. I made a prevo based on a prince, but what if Calyrex was a peasant? What if Calyrex was actually just a super powerful form of a regular old Pokemon species? Kind of like how Diancie is a mutated Carbink. Calyrex is the king, and the normal type Pokemon we're gonna make is the peasant. It makes a whole lot of sense since in the feudal system, the serfs under the Lord's command were basically farmers. And a little peasant rabbit farmer makes even more sense as the original form of a godlike Calyrex that can instantly grow crops. I'm starting with a bunny that has the uh, general shape of Calyrex's head. I mean his face, not his big old noggin. Instead of enlightened, intelligent, regal eyes, I gave it more of a blank, animalistic eyes like a cute Pokemon. It doesn't float, its legs haven't atrophied like Calyrex's dangly legs, so they are strong and long. It's also fluffier and has more of a belly. Instead of patterns that allude to regal robes, its cloth-like fur looks like a medieval peasant or monk cowls. It has one pair of ears instead of two, and obviously no big bulb full of knowledge made it uh, more joyful, ignorance is bliss after all, and this thing is way less intelligent than Calyrex, refining it before adding Calyrex's uh, colors, and then desaturating them and making them less vibrant. This way it doesn't look like a fruitful grass type. Say hi to 
Pezani. The surf Pokemon. Pezani hops around, sawing the seeds it has collected and stored in its hood. It is a proud farmer. In battle, it gleefully dodges its foe's moves by hopping around. It then proceeds to kick and slap its opponents with its ears. It is believed that Calyrex was once a Pezani born with a bud on its head that kept on growing, providing its brain with nutrients and increasing its intelligence exponentially. They have the abilities Harvest and Quick Feet, and I hope you have quick fingers that you'll use to press the like button and subscribe if you haven't. Make sure to check out the description for the music I use, the t-shirts I made for you guys, and my Patreon where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early, which you can also do by clicking the join button and becoming a member. Make sure to follow me on Twitter where I show you guys sneak peeks of these designs as well. I'll see you guys very soon.